ushers will bring you a Bible if you need one. They're looking for hands right now. So just raise your hand. And the page number is page 1057. That'll take you to Matt, uh, to Luke chapter number 2. And so just keep them up. They're going to get to you as quickly. They're coming from the back. So they're just looking for hands. And they'll get to you just as quickly as they can. All right. Several hands. Good. Adam, are you helping out up there? All right. Lift your hand up if you need a Bible in the balcony. Adam will make sure he gets you one. Okay? Good. Luke chapter 2. Let's all look at verse number 7. And again, that's page 1057 if you've got a church Bible. Page 1057. Look at Luke chapter 2. Now let's read verse 7 and look at this together. Okay? It says, uh, Luke 2, 7. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Uh, I, I want you to also go to your handout and look at that real quickly at the top. Another great Christmas verse passage. It says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. Can you say that with me? God sent forth his son. Made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Christmas is a joyful time. It's a time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. God appearing to man. Can you imagine that? God taking on humanity. Appearing to man in a fleshly body. You know, Christmas is a time of joy. It's a time to focus on Jesus Christ. That's what it's supposed to be. And it is a glorious event to celebrate for sure. I mean, the angels celebrated his birth. The shepherds celebrated his birth. The wise men celebrated his birth. I mean, I mean, what a great thing to celebrate. God loves a good celebration. And you know what? Some people are kind of against Christmas, but you know what? The angels celebrated it, so if we celebrate it, we're in pretty good company. Amen? And so, you know, it's a good thing to celebrate. There's no doubt about that. It's a great concept of, hey, let's celebrate the day that, that the, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the light of the world was born into this world. Let's celebrate the day that salvation's plan was set into motion. Man, that is a great thing to celebrate. Amen, church? Now, the problem with it, though, and there is a, there is a, a, a caveat here, and that is, unfortunately, I think the true meaning of Christmas has gotten obscured in our culture today. Would you guys agree with that? There's a lot of activity for sure, but most people will miss Christmas. We say, well, hold on. Wait, time out. Some of the kids especially just perked up and listened. They're like, wait a minute. Miss Christmas? Wait a minute. I might miss my dentist appointment, but I'm not missing Christmas, amen? You're like, I'm not missing. What do you want? No, most people are going to miss Christmas. Here's what I mean by that. People are going to miss it in a sense. They're going to miss out on what it's truly meant to be. They're going to miss the whole meaning and the whole significance of it. Okay, give you an example, illustration. Yes, yesterday, we celebrated my oldest son Clint's birthday. He was in the 10 o'clock service with his family. And, uh, and Clint had a birthday. His birthday is actually today, but today's kind of crazy with, with church and, and with Bethlehem tonight. And we're all involved in that. So we said, oh, we'll celebrate on Saturday. We've got more time. So guess what we did? I want y'all to guess, who do you think the focus was yesterday at Clint's birthday celebration? Who do you think we were focusing on? <laughs> Not a trick question. It's Clint's birthday, guys. Clint, right. It's his birthday, so we focused on Clint, right? Did y'all think we maybe focused on Clayton on Clint's birthday? No. We focused on Clint. And, and here's the thing. We went to Clint's favorite restaurant. And then when we were done, we went to his house. And his wife made his favorite dessert. It was good. <laughs> After we ate dessert, you know, we had presents. We gave Clint presents. We sang to Clint. We celebrated Clint. Now, I will say the grandson, my grandsons, his sons, they helped open the presents, let me tell you. But, but no, we all focus on Clint. That makes sense. It's his birthday. If a friend said to you, hey, your birthday's tomorrow, and you're like, yeah, tomorrow's my birthday. Thanks for remembering. 
And then, oh, yeah, 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 I know tomorrow's your birthday. And then your friend says to you, you know what I'm going to do for your birthday? And you're like, what? For your birthday, I'm going to take off work. And I'm going to sleep in. <laughs> and I'm going to go to my favorite restaurant. And I'm going to order my favorite meal. And then I'm going to go out and buy me a gift. You'd be like, um, I think you missed out on the significance of my birthday. You're celebrating it, but not appropriately. It's not your birthday. It's my birthday, you'd say. And you know, it's the exact same way with regards to Christmas. It's Jesus' birthday, and he should be the focus. It's not Santa Claus's birthday. Now, look, you can do whatever you want with Santa Claus, but I'm telling you this right now. If you choose to you know, do Santa, that's fine. But I want you to know something. Santa shouldn't be the focus. It's not Santa's birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. Amen. And, and, and you know what? It's not Frosty the Snowman's birthday. <laughs> it's Jesus' birthday. It's not the reindeer. It's not Grinch's birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. And to not focus on Jesus would be like us focusing on Clayton yesterday on Clint's birthday. Clint would be like, what is up? Why are you focusing on Clayton? My birthday. It's Jesus' birthday, guys. Remember that. He should be the focus. But a lot of people will miss Christmas. Why? Well, same thing happened 2,000 years ago when he was born. And what I mean by that is that they missed the whole point of it. <laughs> they missed the whole significance of Christ's birth. And many are the same way today. But it doesn't have to happen to you. I want to give you some Bible principles right from the scriptures that I think will help us to not miss out on Christmas and what it's really meant to be. All right, number one is this. If you're taking notes, number one, the Bible teaches us that the first thing you got to do, you got to make a decision right now. I'm going to keep Jesus as the central focus. I'm going to keep Jesus as the central focus of, of Christmas. Now, I want you to go to Luke chapter 2, and let's begin reading in verse number 1. Luke 2, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Verse 3. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. Now, right away, unless you already knew the story, you'd perk up and be like, whoa, a manger? That, what, what's that all about? That's like a barn, a stall, a stall in a barn where cows are. What's he doing there? Because would, would most of you agree that indoors is a normal and appropriate setting to have a baby? Indoor, ladies, would y'all agree indoors is the appropriate setting? All right. So when you read that, Unless you already knew the story, you'd be like, well, in a manger, but then it, it's like it anticipates your question, the Bible, and then it explains it. Look at the end of the verse, verse 7. He says the reason why he was in a manger, a stall, a cow stall, okay, it says because there was no room for them where? In the inn, the hotel, right? Now, I want to talk about the innkeeper for a minute. I want you to think about that innkeeper, the guy in charge of the hotel there. The innkeeper had quite an opportunity, didn't he? He had an opportunity to actually have the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the light of the world, to be born in his inn. Can you imagine him being able to tell that story the rest of his life? You know how we like to tell stories about famous people we may have met. Hey, I got to meet so-and-so. I got a picture with lunch or picture, you know. Or, or we like to, you know, you go in a restaurant and they got pictures up on the walls of famous people that have been in their restaurant. We like to talk about those things as human beings, okay? And can you imagine the innkeeper being able to tell people, you know, the Messiah was born in my hotel. What? Yeah, Jesus was born right here. You're kidding me. No, he was born here. Jesus Christ was born in my in my inn. What? Yeah, come here. I'll show you the room. Come here. I'll show you where the bed. Now, of course, in this culture today, he charged everybody 10 bucks to get in and see it, right? <laughs> but can you imagine being able to tell people that? I mean, the guy missed an opportunity. I mean, you 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 think about that. Why? Why did he miss Christmas? 
Well, most likely it was preoccupation. I mean, can't you picture that innkeeper and he's serving his guests? He's fixing supper. He's getting the rooms ready. He's getting towels and sheets and all this, you know. And here comes Joseph and Mary. They knock on the door. He just kind of looks out the window, doesn't even notice she's pregnant, points to the no vacancy sign. Move along. You know, we don't have any room. Leave. He might have been nasty and hateful. He might not have been. We don't really know. We have the innkeeper be pretty mean and nasty in our Bethlehem. And let me tell you, our actors do a great job of being mean and nasty. In fact, I think they do too good a job. Let me tell you, it's, it's pretty realistic. Now, it's some of the nicest. Joe, Joe Wyatt, who's up here singing, he's one of the innkeepers. And they are just nice guys. But, boy, they do a good job of being mean and nasty. We don't really know if the innkeeper was nasty about it. He might have been. But the point is, he missed one of the greatest days in history. And he could have been right in the middle of it, played a significant role in it, and he actually could have been the first one there to worship Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that? But, you know, people haven't changed. It's the same way today. People get so preoccupied with getting the best bargains, buying gifts, wrapping gifts, fixing food, baking cookies, involved with family, decorating, traveling. There's nothing wrong with any of that. That's all good stuff. But what happens is we get so busy that we miss the most important thing about Christmas, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen, church? Amen. Let's not miss Christmas like the innkeeper. Let's not get so preoccupied with the insignificant that we miss the incredible. God was made flesh on Christmas Day. That is a mind-boggling, incredible thought that I don't know that our finite minds could ever completely comprehend that or wrap our mind around it. That God had to take on flesh and blood because only flesh and blood can die. A spirit can't die. God is a spirit, so he had to take on flesh and blood so he could give his life for our sin on the cross. So God, well, it was Emmanuel, God with us. Literally, God became flesh. He came in a way that we could understand to this earth for us. It's incredible. And sometimes we'll get so preoccupied with the insignificant that we miss the incredible. Keep Jesus as the central focus of your Christmas. So how do I do that? Pastor Dan, talk about it as a family. You know, we tend to talk about things that are important to us. So talk about it as a family. Keep Jesus on the radar. Don't let him fall off the radar. Keep Jesus there. Talk about Jesus leading up to Christmas. That's why we have Christmas is Jesus. And Jesus. You know, explain it to your kids. And, and then Christmas Day, talk about Jesus. Read the Christmas story. But but just remember, it's about Jesus. Yeah, we want to have a good time. Yeah, we want to have fun. Yeah, we want to exchange gifts. Yeah, we want to eat Christmas cookies. Amen. But we got to remember, this is about who? Can y'all tell me what name is in the word Christmas? I'm glad nobody said must. <laughs> must is not a name. Right, Christ. Christ is what Christmas is about, and we need to keep Christ as the central focus. Amen? Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. If you're with me, say with you. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, all right. Number two. Number two. The second way that we keep from missing Christmas is number two. Remember that you are not the central focus. <laughs> okay? That's great, isn't it? Remember, you are not the central focus. Now, one of the easiest things to do is to make Christmas all about us. And if we're honest, all of us can tend to be self-centered. We can tend to be self-pleasing. We can kind of believe that we're the center of the universe. Come on, let's just be honest. We all naturally gravitate that way in our flesh. Unless God changes us, we all, it's kind of our default setting as human beings. We kind of gravitate towards you know, life being about us. And Christmas being about us. Uh, we can even take a holy and divine day like the birth of Jesus Christ and somehow make it all about us. That's what we are capable of doing as human beings. It's amazing. And by the way, there was another guy that did that. His name was King Herod. And if you have your Bible, 
I want you to keep a bookmarker here in Luke 2, but I want you to go backwards two books. Go through Mark to Matthew. All right, it's the first book of the New Testament. You're going to go backwards two books. Go to Matthew chapter 2. So we're going to keep our bookmarker in Luke 2. Go to Matthew 2. Flip back there. You'll find it. Go back two books to Matthew chapter 2. We're going to begin reading in verse 1. And I want you to look for King Herod. All right, all right here we go. Matthew 2 verse 1. It says, Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of who? Herod, Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. And they said, Where is he that's born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we're come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he's like, what's this about another king? I'm the king around here. And so when he heard these things about a king of the Jews, what does the Bible say? He was what? Troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. So you know what he did? He gets the scribes, gets all the priests together. He's like, hey, hey, where's this, where's this king of the Jews supposed to be born? And they're like, oh, yeah. Uh, Micah 5, 2, Old Testament prophecy says he's going to be born in Bethlehem. Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. So look what he does. Look at verse 8. It says, and he sent them to Bethlehem, the wise men. And he said, go, search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Liar. Liar. And God knew he was a liar. And so God told the wise men he was a liar. And the wise men did not come back to him, did not tell him where Jesus was. And so look what he does, verse 16. It says, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, he was tricked, he was exceeding angry. And he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. Isn't that sad? In all the coast, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had, he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Here, here's the deal, guys. Herod was a man who was obsessed with himself, obsessed with his power, obsessed with his position. He was obsessed with his throne. He, was in, he, he panicked. He did not want this other king of the Jews. He didn't want it to even take a chance that that might be true. It was all about him. He missed Christmas. He missed the glory of what happened. Why? He was wrapped up in himself. And in your handout, that's what it says. It's so easy at Christmas time to become wrapped up in self. And that, that's the deal. You know, look, do I think any of you are going to go on a rampage like that? No. But, but we can have that spirit of Herod and become very self-consumed to where it's all about us. And we get obsessed with pleasures and obsessed with gifts. And we miss the greatest gift that God ever gave to this earth, Jesus Christ. We need to remember that Christmas is all about Christ. He's the central focus. We're here to celebrate him. We want to celebrate his accomplishments. Give him the glory and the praise for coming to this earth. Look in your um, handout, Colossians 1.18. Let's grab that. And look at that verse. It says that he, Jesus... Jesus is the head of the body, the church. It says he's the beginning. He's the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he, that's Christ, might have the preeminence, which means first place. Let me ask you something. Who ought to get the priority at Christmas? Who? Jesus. That's right. You know what I love about walking to Bethlehem? I love that ministry, and we've done it for years now. And the reason why I love it is because it's all about Jesus. It just lifts up Jesus. You know, you start the tour out right inside this hallway, and they tell you about Jesus. And then all through the city, as the acting is going on, they're dropping the little seeds about Jesus and the Messiah being born. And they're giving you scripture about the Messiah being born. Then finally you get to the manger, and there's Jesus, you know. And, and again, they, you know, they, they talk about Jesus. Then they take you into the cross, the, the big cross, we got one like that in there. And you go in, and you got the cross, then you got the empty tomb over there that they can see. And then someone stands up and says, let's tell you the rest of the story. And then they tell them about Jesus and what happened to him after he was born. And how that he gave his life on the cross for our sin. How that he rose from the dead the third day. How that he came to save sinners. And I just love walking through Bethlehem because the entire focus of it is Jesus Christ. 
some Christmas events you go to, it's about the singers, it's about the dancers, it's about the drama, it's about what? But you know what? I love this ministry because it's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the way it ought to be. Amen. Number three. The third way that we keep from missing Christmas is number three. Remember why he came. You've got to remind yourself, hey, why was he born in Bethlehem? Why did he come? Well, this is interesting. Um, you're in Matthew, right? Go to Matthew 2, same chapter. Look down at verse 4. It says, And when he had gathered, when King Herod gathered the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said to him, They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, they quote Micah 5 2. So Herod's like, Hey, where, where's this king going to be born? The chief priests, the religious leaders, the scribes, they're like, Oh, well, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. That's what the Bible says. They knew the Bible. They were religious leaders. They were the theological minds of the day. They knew about the Bible. They knew that the Messiah would be born. They knew where he would be born. But it's amazing. <laughs> Do you find it amazing? We don't have any record of them accompanying the wise men to go to Bethlehem to go see him. We don't see any of the religious folk heading there to go worship him. There should have been a parade to go worship him. None of them go. Well, obviously, they failed to understand and remember why he was coming to the earth. And I want you to look in your handout, and I want you to look at that statement there. It says, the religious leaders failed to understand or remember why he was coming to this earth. He was coming to be our, and I want you to look up at the screen and say that with me. What? <laughs> Savior. He was coming to be our Savior. The Bible says he was coming to save his people from their sins. Now, after you write that up, look up here a minute, because I want to share something with you that I think is very relevant. The, the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that day, the scribes, the priests, here's the problem. When you read about these people, you find out that they thought they were a cut above everybody else. They thought they were better than other people. They, they, they thought that we are righteous, we are good people. We're cut above everybody else. And when you think that way, you don't need a Savior. Sometimes, you know, we'll tell people, someone will offer us something, and we'll go, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, I'm good. You ever say that? Um, or somebody will say, hey, will you do this for me? And you'll be like, no, I'm good. What that means is I don't want to do it. Or that means I don't want what you have to offer. And I'm telling you, the Pharisees, the religious people in Jesus' day, literally were like, eh, I'm good. Aren't you going to go to Bethlehem and worship Jesus? No, I'm good. I mean, you know what? We're pretty good people here. We don't need to go running down to Bethlehem to worship Christ. I mean, we're pretty good people here. We're good. Nah, we're good. And they literally meant, we're good. If we don't remember why Christ came, which is to be our Savior, we're going to miss Christmas. We're going to miss its significance. And we really won't appreciate it like we should. Hey, listen to me, guys. We all need a Savior. You say, I don't need a Savior. You do. Whether you recognize it or not, you do. You know why you do? Because here's what the Bible says. For all have sinned and come short. You can compare yourself to Pastor Dan and come out looking good. You may compare yourself with your friend and come out looking good. You may compare yourself to your family member, come out looking good. You know what? When we compare ourselves to Jesus, none of us come looking out good. <laughs> right? When you compare yourself to Jesus, we all come up short. That's why he came. Without Christ coming to this earth, we'd all be doomed in our sin with no hope of eternal life. Nobody can look at God honestly and say, I'm good. I don't need your Savior. I don't need you coming to this earth. I don't need you to die for my sin. I don't need you to do anything for me, God. I'm good. Now, you can say that, but it's not true. You need Jesus. Some of you right now need Jesus so bad in your life because if you don't get Christ in your life, you're going to make some really super bad decisions. 
You're going you're gonna to send your life down a dead-end street. You're going to have a lot of pain, unnecessary pain in your life because of your rejection of Jesus Christ. You need Jesus. People need Jesus. And, and you need Christ. Haven't you rejected him long enough? Accept him. Receive him. Let him be your savior. Let him change your life. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is a celebration of Jesus. In fact, that's number four. I just gave it away. Let me give you the last point. And that is this. Make Christmas this year a praise celebration of Jesus. Jerusalem was a city that was steeped in religious ritual. They had a beautiful temple, lots of religious rules and rituals. Unfortunately, it was empty religious ritual, right? That's what Jesus said. So you know what God did? Go back to Luke 2. Let me show you what God did. Go back to Luke chapter 2. All right. In Luke chapter, hopefully you put your bookmarker there. But in Luke chapter number 2 and uh, verse number 8, look, what, look who God revealed the birth of Jesus to. Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. In Jerusalem, just a few miles away, you had university professors. You had university students. You had the rich. You had the elite. You had the, relig the religious leaders of the temple. You had the, the high society people. And yet God skips right over Jerusalem. Went to a backwoods hill, found a bunch of shepherds sitting there, sent an angel to them. And look at verse 11. It, they said to the shepherds, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will. You say, Pastor Dan, why these shepherds? Why not the people of Jerusalem? I mean, you have some pretty wealthy, powerful, religious people there. Why these group of shepherds? Jerusalem was a city full of ritual. Unfortunately, they were so busy carrying out their rituals, they missed reality. They were not looking for a savior, and they missed Jesus. Do y'all think that still happens today? Religion can do nothing about your sin problem. Religion gives us rituals to perform, but it leaves us really quite unchanged. At the end of the day, we're still sinners. Even after doing all of our religious rituals, at the end of the day, we're still dead in our sin. And you know... People will do everything they can many times to be religious, but unfortunately, they miss Jesus. And I want you guys to know some good news today. Jesus is no longer in a manger. Jesus is no longer on a cross. Jesus is no longer in the tomb. The tomb is empty, and now Christ wants to live in you. He wants to have a relationship with you. External rituals... Do not change our inward condition. And at this time of the year, make a concerted effort to build your relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, when the service is over today, come by the hospitality room. Talk to one of the musicians. Talk to someone in the connections at the coffee uh, house. or you know. But, but talk to someone and say, hey, I want to know Jesus. I want to know I have that eternal life, that gift of eternal life. Talk to someone and, and, and like make this the day when you're like, no, I want to be a Christ follower. I want, to, I want to know I'm saved. I want to be a Christ follower. I'm tired of playing around. I want to follow Jesus Christ, and I want to know him. And it's not about religion. It's not about rituals. It's not about any of that. It's about your heart acceptance of Jesus Christ. In your handout, it says, just like the shepherds and the angels, Make 
Christmas, make Christmas a praise celebration of Jesus. Amen, church? Amen. I want us to pray right now. And so if you would, bow your heads with me. And I'm going to have the ushers prepare for our offering. Um, but if you're here today, and maybe you're not sure that you're saved, I want you to think about that. And I want you to really contemplate that. What if you were to die today? Because, you know, people do die at every age. And so if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you would go to heaven? If not, we sure do want you to get that settled today. With our heads bowed and with our eyes closed, we're going to pray right now. Will you open up your heart to Jesus Christ today? Remember, Christmas is about Jesus. Lord, we love you, God. We pray now that you will bless and do a mighty work, God, in our hearts and lives today. Lord, I know that we're giving our Christmas offering today. Many more may be doing that. But, Lord, we wanted to glorify you. We wanted to help the Tanger people to get a Bible. We're hoping that by this time next year, they're going to have the whole New Testament, Lord, that they can read and study and have a Bible in a language that they can understand. So God bless in our gifts, our generosity, do a mighty work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.